Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're going to talk about Comcast and find some ways to get around their very exorbitant monthly fees for equipment and services. And I'm, I'm doing this video because I got kind of upset the other day when I turned on my television and all the channels that used to be unencrypted over the digital cable that I could pull off my television's internal tuner without a cable box uh, suddenly became encrypted and scrambled and unavailable. And I was really kind of irritated and I did some research and found out that to get my three televisions back up uh, with the service that I once had, I'd have to pay an additional $30 or so a month to do it. And I was really not happy about that. So I did some research and I found this product. This is called the HD Home Run. It comes from a this is HD Home Run Prime actually. Uh, it comes from a company called Silicon Dust. And what it does is allows you to plug in a cable card, which looks a lot like the PC cards we used in our laptops at the turn of the century. And what that card does is it uh, basically is an a decryption device that the cable company recognizes. So uh, you get that cable card by turning in your uh, cable box that came with your plan. They give you the cable card. They even pay you uh, $2.50 a month in credit uh, you get for your own equipment. You uh, plug it into the HD home run. You go through a little bit of a configuration screen. Uh, you call up Comcast to pair the thing up and you are pretty much off and running. Now, what you can do with it is uh, load up some free software from uh, VLC and it's available on the Mac and Windows. And what it'll do is let you watch a lot of these stations um, pretty much uh, without any issues. And I was very impressed with that. It doesn't solve the problem for my wife who just wants to turn the TV on, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so when you uh, plug it into your network, the HD Home Run shows up automatically to any device that recognizes the DLNA standard. It's something that Sony initially came up with, but now it's pretty much universal. Uh, VLC recognizes that, so you can see uh, it immediately finds this thing on the network without any issues. And I can go down and uh, maybe I'll click on the weather channel. It might be the safest thing I can plug in here without getting kicked off YouTube. Uh, and it'll pop up an HD stream of the Weather Channel pretty much right away, which is really kind of neat. The challenge is getting this stuff onto your television. Now, you could always hook the, the computer up to the TV, which can work for most folks, but my wife would prefer to hit the clicker and, and have things turn on and just work. So I've set out on a quest to try to figure out how to, how to make this happen. And uh, what I've pretty much settled on at the moment is to use the Windows Media Center. And that's something that's built into a lot of uh, versions of Windows 7 8, even XP has it. I don't know which ones are compatible with this, but I am using Windows 7's Media Center on a, a Sony VAIO laptop, and that's kind of serving as my Media Center server. And then what you can do is get Xbox 360s and connect those over your local network and extend that Media Center network. And what's really cool about it is that not only do you get the ability to watch television in a, with a guide in a, in a pretty user-friendly way, uh, you also have the ability to watch channels that you can't watch on your computer. And the reason is, because of all this cable bureaucracy, some channels are blocked from being watched on a non-approved device. So HBO is a great example. Um, so I can watch HBO through the Xbox Media Center connected through uh, the Windows computer. So that's one thing that works. PlayStation 3, which I do not own, apparently um, will allow you to do this as well, and that might be a little less uh, cumbersome to deal with. So I'm going to try to borrow a PlayStation 3 from a friend and see if I can uh, hook that up and, and see if it's a little bit easier to get uh, television up and running with, with that device versus the, uh, the Windows machine. The Windows Media Center extender on the Xbox 360 does take a little bit of time to load. So it's a, you know, it, it's not quite passing the test yet for the family here, but I'm going to keep uh, working at it and see uh, where I can go. I also found that Wi-Fi doesn't really work all that well to the Xboxes, so um, you'll want to make sure that you have a um, probably a hardwired Ethernet connection. I did try some of those power line adapters and that didn't work all that well either. So I found the, uh, on the Wi-Fi and on the uh, power line Ethernet adapter that the Xbox was a little sluggish in responding to uh, remote control commands and some other things. So uh, you're probably going to want to wire some things up and I've been uh, drilling some holes through floors and walls and uh, I'm, I'm really very popular in my house right now. Another thing that I discovered is that a lot of newer televisions have the DLNA arch architecture built into them. So uh, although the, the menus can be a little cumbersome and it treats the, the TV channels like it would be a video file, um, I was able to, on a, on a fairly new Samsung television that I actually won at a raffle, I was able to use that television to uh, connect uh, to the HD Home Run Prime uh, and just pull up a, a network that it was allowed to play. Um, unfortunately, that television didn't work with the HBO option there. So, you know, it's, um, it's a good way to get around the problem. I'm saving, you know, $20 a month that I would have had to pay otherwise, and I'm getting a credit. 
um, but there is still some work to do in order to get this thing functional. So I'm going to keep playing with this. I'd love to hear if you're using the HD Home Run Prime, how you're using it. And if anyone's uh, used a PlayStation 3 with it, let me know because I'd love to see how that works and that might actually solve my problem. So I'm going to keep plugging away at this and I'm going to uh, report back with, uh, with any new progress I've made over the next couple weeks. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. Thank you.